This is the Etsy Conversations podcast, and I'm your host, Ijama. And this week, I have a fabulous guest. Um, her name is Tammy Cannon, and she's the owner of Cannon Online Marketing. And we're talking about marketing your Etsy shop. And this is very specific to you. We're going to talk about getting to the front page of Etsy and what's that, what that's all about. So hold on. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, Tammy, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Ijama. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, you're so welcome. So I'm I'm excited to have you on because um, I know you're familiar with Etsy and the Etsy community. And one of the major pain points for Etsy sellers is marketing and getting to that, or, or, um, what do you call it, the, the front page of Etsy. So I'm excited to have you on because I know you've done something that um, listeners are going to be really interested in as far as that. But you also have a background in marketing and promotions. So I'm, I'm glad to talk to you about that. And um, I think it's going to be good. So thank you again. Thank you. I think it's going to be fun to blending my maker and marketing personalities together to help your listeners. Yeah. Now, before we start the conversation, can you just tell us a little bit about you and your background? Sure. So um, as I said, I'm a maker and marketer, and I've been doing both for about 20 years. And I always tell a funny story when my husband, who is now my husband, but when we were dating um, back in high school, I went over to his house during Christmas and his mom was actually, she had the hot glue gun out. She had a wreath and all of this really cool stuff. She was hot gluing onto the wreath for Christmas. And that was really my first exposure to crafting and hobby. And and I thought, gosh, this is so cool and how easy and quick and fast she got it done. Mm. And then a few months later, um, it was Easter and she was mod potching <laughs> napkins onto real eggs that she had blown the egg out of. Oh, yeah. And I just was like, okay, this is so cool. And so since then, I have been crafting and making. I still do those eggs every year. Um, Now I put glitter on them and there's all kinds of new stuff, the gold foil and all of that fun stuff. But um, being a maker has been such a great part of my life. And so when my marketing business gets to be too stressful or I had been managing clients for the past five years and doing social media marketing for them. But when it was a stressful day or busy day, I'm coming home and sitting down to do something creative was just really something I looked forward to and helped me get out of my own, my own head in business. So I've been so excited to be able to blend both sides and come up with courses and blog posts and ideas for the creative community. Oh, fantastic. So Canon Online Marketing has primarily been a social media marketing agency for clients. And these are, um, are these brick and mortar clients or, or um, just clients online, like let's say clients who run an online business? So when I first started out, they were ranging from government to restaurants to boutiques in my area. So I live north of Seattle in a little historic town called Snohomish. Mm. And um, we have a lot of quaint boutiques and restaurants and a whole historic downtown. And so a lot of my customers were um, shop owners who had a brick and mortar, but were looking to go online as well. And a lot of them actually purchased products for their shops from Etsy sellers. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of a neat um, circle of a creative community, super creative community here in the area. So I had the privilege of being around um, just a lot of beautiful things. We are the uh, Pacific Northwest antique capital. And so, um, right. So it's very inspiring. People come from all over to um, find just beautiful things and be inspired by things. And so I had the fortunate experience to work with um, all types of business owners and their social media marketing needs. Wow. So 
just for anyone who wants to understand social media marketing, does that mean that you were running their social media accounts? So Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all of those, or did you specialize in one particular platform? I did all of it. And so um, I was doing blogging, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, along with Facebook ads for a lot of the events that we would have around here. Mm. So it got to be pretty busy. And so two years ago in 2015, I decided that it just got to be too much. And so, um, I mean, another funny story, I was in Whistler with my family on vacation and I've got uh, air quotes going on vacation (laughs) because when you own your own business, you don't really ever go on vacation. And one of my customers was having an event that very day and I would get photos from the the event that then it was my job to post them and get them in the right place. So I'm at the very top of Whistler Mountain and I get this notification that, okay, here are the photos. And so I had to stop what I was, you know, doing and, and post everything out on Twitter and get the right hashtags and get the description and tag everyone. And so it was kind of there that I was like, okay, I need to make some changes. Wow, this is so very cool that I've created this business for myself and I'm able to do this anywhere. Um, It just wasn't conducive to like really having a a lot of time for myself. Mm -hmm. So I decided to transition and create online courses. And I started with a very basic girlfriend's guide to social media for my clients so that they could join my Facebook group, and then just learn the details that they needed to know to run their own social Mm. in their businesses. Because at the time I, I was seeing that, you know, people should probably be pulling the social inside and doing it themselves, even though not everyone takes the best of photos. And a lot of the (laughs) stuff I got when I wasn't there at an event were dark photos and things I had to filter and really do a lot of work with. I really think it's important that people at least learn how to do it themselves so that they can then hire someone maybe in-house to do it for them. So um, that's why I created lots of little videos for people. And I even have a YouTube channel now for some tips and tricks on social. But my primary um, focus now is creating courses that help people in social media, how to run Facebook ads and all of that good stuff. Okay. And is the hub for everything? So if if someone wants to go and watch these videos or take a look at the courses, canononlinemarketing.com. Yes, that's the place to go. I'm going to just have all the links and everything um, there for people. Um, I also contribute to Social Media Examiner and the Huffington Post, and the links for those are there as well. So I'm kind of trying to house everything under canononlinemarketing.com. Okay, great. Now, I will link to Canon Online Marketing in the show notes for this episode. But if you want to type it in directly to jump over there and check it out right now, I'll spell it for you. It's C-A-N-N-O-N, online marketing. So um, just to make sure you get to the right um, canon. Did you buy two URLs, one with one in and one with two? Now I'm just curious. (laughs) <laughs> I should have. I should have. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So again, that's Canon Online Marketing and Canon is spelled C-A-N-N-O-N and then onlinemarketing.com. And I'll have the link to that. So that sounds pretty exciting. I think what you describe is, is well, a couple of things. One, when you had just to, um, enough business that you got to the point where you needed to scale back. I mean, how many people want to get to that point? It sounds glamorous if you're not (laughs) yet there that I just have so much to do. I need to, you know, to scale back. I I think most people aspire to get there. But then, you know, when you're in that situation, it's a real problem if it's interfering with your life, especially when what you do is online, because I think um, clients don't draw that line between, okay, well, you know, it's 7 p.m. right now. 
this person <laughs> could be doing something else, but it's online and, it, you know, it's 24 seven, the internet is going, you know, at, at all times. So yeah, I can send an email, but you know, if you're a diligent business owner and you see an email from a client and they need something done, you're going to, you know, respond to that. And, and I can see how that could interfere with your life. The other thing I liked that you said was that, um, you think that businesses should at least start to work on their social media themselves so that they have an idea. So even if the time comes when they need to pass that off, they understand the basics. Absolutely. I think that's, you know, with video being such a big deal now, it's really hard for an outside social media manager that, you know, because some of my clients were an hour away. And so I couldn't always be at every event. But with video and live video in particular, um, that's so important for a small business owner to mm -hmm. take on themselves mm -hmm. or at least dedicate someone um, to that because, um, you know, your social media manager it isn't an employee. And so they're not as vested in the same way to help your brand along with its own personality behind the scenes with images and, and things like that on Instagram is great. But in the last year with live, mm -hmm. um, it's just so different. I think it's really important to bring that stuff in house. Okay. And by live, just to be clear for anyone who doesn't understand, there's Facebook live. There's also Instagram live. Is there any other one? Those are the two I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah, Facebook Live, Instagram Live. I, I think some people are still using Periscope. Oh, yeah. Um, and you can, you know, access that through Twitter. Um, YouTube has, I oh, believe, yeah. a live platform. So I think it's just going to be everywhere now. Wow. Okay. Yes. Um. So for anyone who thought social media was going to go away or not be as important it's turning out to it appears it's turning out to be more and more essential to the success of your business the social media as overwhelming as it can be and as much as some of us don't want to you know be out there that much we're going to need to do you think mm -hmm. that's do you think that's accurate oh i think it's so accurate but what i really feel like people um, should just ask themselves is which platform they are most comfortable in and where their customers are, because being everywhere isn't going to be very beneficial. Um, yeah. Twitter right now is very saturated. And that used to be my favorite one five and six years ago was mm -hmm. kind of how I got into social media. Mm -hmm. It was so easy to find people locally that you could become friends with. And actually mm -hmm. I met people in real life back when meetups were a thing and <laughs> we got together and um, I'm still friends with a lot of those people now. And so I, I still love Twitter for that. But nowadays it's so different and they've all grown. All the platforms mm -hmm. in social have grown so much that you really need to find where your people hang out and where you feel most comfortable. So if you're not comfortable doing videos, then YouTube it's probably not going to be the best place to go. And if the millennials are not your customers, then Snapchat's not going to be, mm -hmm. at least at this point, um, the place to really invest a lot of your time. So, um, yes, we need to be on social, but I think it's OK to pick and choose which platforms that you're most comfortable with. OK, so that leads into the next question I had for you, which is. Are you of the opinion that there is, I know you said go to a social media platform that you're comfortable with, but if we say, okay, yes, that's true. But are you of the opinion that there is or are specific social media platforms that even if you're not comfortable are more, what's the word, lend themselves better to running or, or growing your Etsy shop your creative business or do you think that each person can fare just as well on any social media platform as long as they're comfortable oh that's a good question and i my 
exciting answer because I love it so much is Instagram. So Instagram is really like the number one place for creative people. And I have seen so much growth in Etsy shops and just e-commerce itself with Instagram. Um, mm. It's been a, so amazing. I can't even believe it. And when we started um, our shop, and I'm told the story about my my now mother-in-law mm-hmm. um and everybody on that in that side of the family is crafty so my sister-in-law I've got another sister-in-law that's um super crafty and interior decorator and all of that stuff so when we got excited about Etsy and like okay we can make all these things um at the time Instagram was just blowing up with everybody getting on there and um people promoting like um okay, we'll take your Instagram photos and we'll make calendars out of them or we'll do magnets or, um, and so I thought, you know, what a great idea. I'm going to take Instagram photos, um, and customize them and put them on canvas and put epoxy over the top of them and sprinkle glitter. I mean, I had this whole thing and it was so niche and so custom that um, Sue B. Zimmerman, who is the Instagram expert, some of um, your listeners may know who she is, she actually picked us up and mentioned us on her creative live three-day Instagram intensive that she was doing. Mm. And it was so neat because Instagram is such a way for Etsy shop owners to put your stuff out there, engage with the creative community. Mm -hmm and be able to have those one-on-one conversations with people. Um, And I don't know that you can do that in the same way with a platform like Twitter and, Mm -hmm. you know, with Facebook even. You can post photos, but the interaction and the the quick interaction of comments on Instagram lends itself so beautifully to Etsy shop owners. Yeah, I I agree. And It could be because nowadays I'm slightly partial to Instagram, but I I do agree. I love that Instagram is a platform that you can still make real connections with real people on. Um, Twitter used to be that way and and I liked it for that, but not so much now anymore. It now to me it feels more like a um just a running feed of everyone (laughs) throwing what they want to say out there and I'll confess I've joined the crowd because that's just kind of the way it's it's become now but where I really like to connect is on Instagram and then in in our Facebook group because the groups are more um more intimate, more social, less, less just put, less post and run. You can actually carry on conversations in, you know, in threaded, um, in threaded posts. So, so that's, those are the two I I like, but Instagram more, more than, more than any other. Yeah, I agree with you. I like Facebook groups as well. Um, you know, if they're done well and they have a good manager that's you know Mm -hmm. monitoring things it can be a really great a really great way to communicate with um whatever your industry is and whoever your your market is there's a group for that (laughs) for sure there really is (laughs) (laughs) okay so now you're going you're moving away from managing client accounts and going more towards offering courses teaching people what you were doing for your clients so that they are empowered to be able to do the same for themselves. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's my passion to be able to teach what I know so people can do what they do even better. Okay. All right. So how well do you think um, one is able to equip a novice on social media? And do you have a specific course, say, for um, Etsy sellers that can get them up and running? Oh, a good question. So I am so excited to share that I just recently finished a course for Etsy sellers. It's called the Front Page Guide to Etsy. And it really shows the blending of the online marketing world with the creative world. Mm. And how we can look at Etsy the same way that we look at Google in terms of searching. And so through the course, I teach people how to look at 
a Google search, for instance, and see how people are searching there because they're likely going to search the exact same way on Etsy for the products that you're selling. So Mm. we've got to do some research and figure out exactly how people are doing that. And as a, for instance, um, in my shop, I really love German glitter glass and I use epoxy and I use papers and rustic wood. And those are kind of like my four things that I love to work with. Mm -hmm. Now I was introduced to German glitter glass a couple years ago. And if you don't know what it is, it's just cut glass. And, um, I actually buy mine through Miss Mustard Seed on Etsy. Mm. And it's imported and it's actual glass and um, she sells all kinds of different ones and they patina over time. So they give art and whatever you're using it on just a really cool um, look to it. And you can use it on anything, on burlap and papers and different things. Well, the way I was introduced to it, I was calling it German glitter glass. Mm -hmm. But the way that people actually search for that on Etsy is German glass glitter. Hmm. So I am now in the process of going back over my listings that have the glitter glass and I'm going to have to change things around because I I think the search, if I'm remembering my research um, good, is that when I type in German German glitter glass, I think it was only like a thousand searches a month for that search phrase. Mm. But when I switch the words around to German glass glitter, it's 10,000. So I'm missing a huge opportunity by not doing my research Mm. and figuring out how actual people search for items that are in my shop. So such cool stuff that I'm just so passionate about teaching. Yeah. So I have a question about that when it comes to word order and and the difference in in search volume based on the order of the words in your search term. Do you want to, I guess it would depend on what your end goal is. So you're selling the German glitter glass. Do you want to show up in the search results that have many more, many more, um, what's the word? That has a higher volume. And and will you not I want to make sure I phrase this correctly. In my head I'm thinking about it correctly. So if you if you phrase if you use the word order that has many more searches, does that mean that there's more competition there and you'll be harder to find versus the one that has fewer searches where it might be there might be fewer results and so your chances of showing up are higher than in the you know, the one with the larger volume. Does that make sense? It does. It does make sense. And so the the tool that I teach people um, to use is the Google Keyword Planner. And you get access to that with a Google Analytics account. Everything is free. Mm -hmm. Um, You need a Google AdWords. And so why... And and you don't have to pay for the Google AdWords or anything to use the tool. Mm -hmm. But Google has this product because they um, are showing their advertisers, like, this is what is a popular actual search phrase that people are using and it has a high competition meaning a lot of businesses are paying for it so for us as etsy sellers we don't need to worry about paying for anything but we do need to know the way that people are actually searching Mm. so if if people are actually searching for german glass glitter i want to make sure that i i put my search Um, or my phrases in my descriptions and in my titles and tags exactly that way, because that's the way that people, actual real human beings are searching for it. So I want to make sure that I, I get in there. If I'm, if I list my listings, which I have now as German glitter glass, I'm not going to get as many views because people aren't searching for that term. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It does make sense. Then my next question is, when you compare what people are searching for in Google searches and apply that to Etsy, does one have to be concerned about search intent? So if, I, if I'm looking for something on, on Google, I know I can't buy something from Google. So more often than not, when I'm searching for something on, on Google, I'm doing it because I'm looking for information. 
not to buy necessarily. Whereas if I'm looking for something on Etsy, I'm there to buy something. So is there, do we need to take that into consideration that um, the terms that people search for on Google are not necessarily purchasing purchasing terms versus on Etsy or say Amazon, where when people are searching there, you know, they're looking for something because they want to buy it. Does that make sense? Yes. And I think it's both because when you do a search for something, um, you're right. People are wanting information and sometimes that's, you know, shopping. And so that's why a lot of times you'll see the Google shopping images pop yeah. up on things. And if you look at doing research based on your own products. So through the course, um, we look at like hand lettering is such a popular thing right now. Mm -hmm. And so if you search for those terms on Google, you're going to see a lot of Google shopping pop up. And then what's interesting is you're going to see Etsy pop up as well. So you're going to see links out to Etsy and what I also teach inside there, which is so cool, is we can actually go in and see which keywords Etsy's paying for in their own advertising mm -hmm. so that we can ride their coattails even. Mm -hmm. And if we know that Etsy's searching for, you know, hand lettering or if they're paying for that keyword, then we have to make sure that we're using that same term inside of our listings. And so I don't think the, the intent for shopping is so hard to know okay. but if we but if we know how people are searching whether they're looking for information or to um, find things that's what we can use inside of our listings is how they're actually searching so that's why it's key to look at Google because um, the way that they're searching on Google is likely how they're searching when they do finally want to buy something that they're going to search that exact same way on Etsy. Okay. I see. All right. That makes sense. Okay. So, so the front page guide to Etsy is basically you're going to teach us how to transform our listings so that they start to show up on the front page. And then I'm looking at the, at the, um, the site, the site here where, where we can get to the course. And I'm also going to link to this in the show notes, but if you want to jump over there right now, it's canononlinemarketing.teachable.com. And you say that we'll see our efforts take effect in as little as two days. Yes. And so, and actually, um, Inside of the course, I talk about, the, I just take a specific listing because I think it's always helpful to have a framework for people. Mm -hmm. And I was actually able to get my listing the very next day on the front page and in the first search result for the keyword I was targeting, the phrase I was targeting. And so um, it's so exciting to be able to have that opportunity. Uh, why, why I say two days is because the Etsy algorithm is a little bit behind. Mm. And so sometimes it could be three days before somebody sees a jump. Um, but I was actually able to see it the very next day. And I was surprised because I know that there's a little bit of a lag there. Okay. So that's why I say two days. Um, but people can certainly, you know, as soon as they learn the strategies, they can apply them today mm -hmm. and then just keep track of them. And it's, it's so exciting to see that it's kind of like a leaderboard here, watching your listing kind of rise <laughs> um, to the top. So it's really fun. Yeah, that would be exciting. OK, so the strategies you teach you teach in here and, and I'd like us to just talk over um, to discuss what what we're going to go through in the course but the strategies yeah. you teach are they do they apply mainly just to handmade or are they applicable to people who sell supplies and vintage items oh it's it's for well that's a good question because i know that um is it called the etsy studio that's mm -hmm. coming out yes. now for for those and so I think that when you're talking about search, I think it applies across the board, but um, there might be a different twist to it when you're looking for supplies versus products. Mm -hmm. And so um, the the class that I've created really takes a look at like, you know, industries and actual products like wedding invitations and um 
uh, the hand lettering that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so for supplies, I have to be honest, I, I'm not sure. I think that the strategies would apply, but I'm not sure how exactly they're going to come into play with this, you know, with Etsy's new studio idea. Okay. And, and just to be clear, um, Etsy studio is Etsy's new platform for shops that sell supplies. And um, so if you have a shop that sells supplies, you'll you'll show up on Etsy Studio. You'll also still show up on the regular Etsy site as well. But shops that sell handmade items um, won't show up on Etsy Studio. So if you sell supplies, essentially, you're going to be showing up in two marketplaces. And- Marcus, yeah, I'm I'm so excited about this. Me actually. too. I, I'm 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 just waiting for it to launch. I'm so curious to see how it's all going to pan out. <laughs> and then my other question was: in the course from Page Guide to Etsy, are there additional tools or resources that people who buy this course will need to pay for or subscribe to in order to actually get things done? Oh, no, that's that's the exciting part of it. So once they get in there, um, there are five modules. And so we talk about canvassing the Etsy community and the Google community, doing those basic searches around our product. And then we move into canvassing the competition, you know, really getting into the front page of who's showing up first in Mm -hmm. search results and figuring out, you know, what keywords they're using, the terms and phrases that they use, how they've got their photos laid out and everything. Then we go into really using the Google Keyword Planner, and that is all free, and hopefully it will be forever. I I can't believe it's free because it's such an awesome tool. And -hmm. what that's going to do is when you type in your search phrase, Google's going to tell you how many average searches your phrase gets every single month. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, they're going to give you actual searches that real people used around your Mm -hmm. product, which is so very valuable. And then we get into Etsy promotion and then even a little bit into Facebook ads, but there are no additional tools and things that you need. Um, I do have a couple bonuses in there which uh, help you take better photos because I know that's that can be a little mm-hmm. hard for for people as well. So I've got a three part video there, and there are certain things you could buy if you wanted to. Um, but we can do really amazing things with our cell phones. So I just teach you a few prop ideas and. Um, if you want to invest in a tripod and little things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's, it's really kind of a watch and go type of course. Okay. And how long can someone estimate that it will take to go through the course and actually implement what you're teaching? Ooh, that's a good question. So inside the course, I have 13 videos and they range from... 10 minutes to about 17 minutes. I mean, they're not very, very long at Mm -hmm. all. And each module in each video, you can actually apply that lesson right afterwards. And um, it's it's very easy and simple to get around and understand. And then um, I think the entire course, I haven't added up all the time, but I try to keep my courses around 90 minutes. So you could in a day get through the course And, um, you know, start building your strategy and then just I recommend taking like one listing. So I know for people who have a lot of listings are like they're going to learn this stuff and go, oh, my goodness, I've got to go change everything. But, you know, just start with one, um, test it for yourself and see how it works and then slowly just, you know, kind of redo your listings. And then the other side of it is um, once you get comfortable with the strategy, uh, I talk about the advertising and the promotions and then some social media. So I have a calculator in there to help people uh, make sure they're staying profitable with their listings. That's great. 
I know. It's for me, I, I built it for myself because it's kind of like, okay, how many people need to visit your shop before you get a customer? What's the mm. conversion rate? So I've actually got a whole spreadsheet in there for people to plug their own numbers in mm -hmm. and um, just to make sure that once they're comfortable with the strategy of getting on the front page and they're ready to start building their customer base, um, they can learn some of those things as well. And then with social media, I've got some templates in there for Pinterest where they can start building once they get their listings built out they can start building some Pinterest pins to drive traffic back to their shops so I'm I was hoping to build it um, for something that I needed when I started a couple of years ago and I hope it's a benefit to people okay it does sound like like that will all be beneficial I mean the the um, the calculator for one is yeah. you know it's it, it's it's huge because you know one of the things I've I've mentioned before is that sometimes Etsy sellers will undervalue their products and even though they're making sales they actually aren't making a profit and oh. so it's it it doesn't really count. No, absolutely. And and that's the hard thing with my, you know, my online marketing business, um, teaching people Facebook ads, because you've got to know what your numbers are. So if you're mm -hmm. sending people um, to a landing page, let's say to opt in for a newsletter, or to get you know, a, a worksheet or say my calculator, for instance, I, if I was giving it away for free, mm -hmm. um, I would need to know what my conversion rate was. How many people do I need to land on that page to opt in to make my advertising worthwhile? Okay. Right. And it's the same thing for the Etsy shop. And how many visitors do you need in order to make one sale? That's really going to inform your promotions and mm -hmm. how much you can spend. Now, if someone sees this course and decides, I just can't take in any more information. Tammy, can you do this for me? Is that an option? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I have not thought of that. I'm going to have to put my it. thinking cap on, <laughs> but certainly somebody could, um, depending on when they're listening to this, uh, give me a shout and we can certainly talk about it. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> now, the other question I have is, OK, so as we go through this course, you said take one listing and just work on that. Do everything you're you're suggesting and teaching on one listing. If a shop has, say, 150 items, Ooh, is it yeah. enough to do maybe 10 and can having those 10 products to to make these tweaks and changes to 10 different listings and having those 10 show up on page one do you think that's enough or do you think that eventually we should have all our listings tweaked using the techniques that you teach so that they all because well on etsy well one of their not rules but you know they try not to show more than one item from each shop so is it worth it to do this for every single listing? Or do you think we should pick one or two listings from each category of our Etsy shop and adjust them to follow what you teach so that at least those get on the front page, get people into our shop door where they can see everything else? That's That was what I was just going to say is I would, you know, if it were me, 150 products, the kudos to that person, because that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of work. But um, I would pick just what you said, you know, divide them up into categories and then pick either your most expensive thing or your most recent mm -hmm. thing or the, the thing you're most excited about and take one or two of those and and use the strategy because, you know, you're not going to get all of your listings, you know, on on the front page unless it's a very narrow category that you're that you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, you know, I guess moving forward for new listings, I would definitely put this strategy into place because every product is going to be unique or at least the category. Um, so for instance, I've got a deer antler and that I put German glitter glass on the tips of it. So it's very unique. It's a very niche. And so using this strategy, I was able to get that on the front page and past 
my competitors. So that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, following the strategy for my rustic wood signs, let's say um, I'm going to use different keywords there and I'm going to target a different keyword phrase for every listing that I do. So um, I think starting with the categories, picking your you know two favorites, two most expensive, um, and figuring those out first and then go with the rest. Don't make it overwhelming. Okay. And I think you're right. It's enough to get people into your shop and then seeing all of the other cool things within that category that you're doing. And you may not need to um, improve those listings or upgrade them. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Um, now the Google Keyword Planner, I haven't, I haven't used it in like the last couple of months. I actually, no, not since the beginning of this year so far. But towards the end of last year, they changed the way they return search results. In the past, they would give you like exact numbers, and now they do ranges. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. So is that information still valuable enough to give a good idea of, you know, what we should be looking for and what terms we can be working with? You know, it is. And so since the tool is used for the people running ads, mm -hmm. um, I would have a harder time being a Google advertiser. I would be so upset that they made that change. Yeah. But for us in Etsy, um, we're just really focused on the search terms and oh, okay. and how they're done. We don't really, you know, we we know that we're on the right track when there are searches. So if it's like 1K to 10K, then we know that, yes, this is definitely a good product. Like if you're trying to expand your product line and you just want to do a little bit of research, um, those numbers are helpful because then you know that an average of, you know, a thousand people are searching for it every month. What gets to be really awesome for us, um, not so much for people paying for ads, mm -hmm. but they have a column in there that's competition. And so they have low and high. Well, most people would think that low competition and if, if you're an advertiser, you might want to pay a lower amount because there's not a lot of people in there. Mm -hmm. But for us as Etsy sellers, we want to look for the high competition because we know that a lot of people are paying for those keywords. Mm -hmm. So we get the search volume, but then we also get that, hey, this is a competitive phrase that actual businesses are paying for and we get to use them for free in our listings. Mm -hmm. And so it's yeah. very valuable. Oh, smart. Okay. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay. So depending on how you use the information, well, depending on what you need the information for, um, that determines um, how you interpret the data that it returns. Right. Exactly. Okay. So um, I was just kind of... It, updating one of my listings for a rustic sign and and the sign that I have says blessed on it. Mm -hmm. So when I just typed in blessed sign inside of the Google keyword planner, um, I got a bunch of other actual searches that people were searching for. So people search for like um, thankful, grateful, blessed sign hmm. so that they're searching for all of those words in the same thing. So I'm like, mm. oh, that's really interesting. Or they've got it reversed and it's thankful, grateful, blessed. Then they've got rustic wood sign, personalized sign. So now I can begin to build my titles and my descriptions and make sure that I'm using um, those keywords in the right order. And what else is interesting is there's a lot of misspelled words that people search for. Yeah. And what's kind of fun is to use those, you know, sparingly, but like in your description, at least having it in there um, and having both or having the British version of yeah. English uh -huh. and the English version of English, American version <laughs> of English in there at the same time, mm -hmm. um, the Google Keyword Planner is going to tell us how many searches each of those get. So it's really interesting. I just love it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so for the listings, then will we be tweaking our titles and our tags and the words that we use in our descriptions? Yes, the titles. Okay 
titles and using all the characters in our mm-hmm. titles okay. and then the descriptions and all the 13 tags, at least as of this nice. recording, I think it's 13. Yeah. Uh huh. Have you heard of or are you familiar with the tool Marmalade? Yes. Yes, I have seen that. I can't remember how much it is a month, but um, I have seen it. Okay. So will this be more of a manual effort of forgetting the information that one might get if they just subscribed to Marmalade or getting a more getting more tailored information for your specific listing? So I don't, I don't use Marmalade okay. to be honest. I did look into it and it, um, I didn't see a ton of information of like how they get their keywords and how mm-hmm. they're doing their SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then it was, I, I forget the price every single month. So I kind of was like, okay, if I'm just starting out or I'm wanting to do everything I can to improve my listings now, I would start um, with the Google keyword planner and, and doing the research and getting familiar with it on, on your own. Yeah, okay. Um, and then if, you know, seeing how the efforts go and you may not need Marvely, but not everybody has the, um, you know, like you say, I don't want to learn something new or it has the <laughs> bandwidth to sit down and go through it. So Marmalade would be um, a good, a good option for people to do that. But I'm always of the, the idea and philosophy that, you know, at least know how to do it yourself yeah. um, before you spend money on, you know, someone else or, or a membership that might not do something that you're expecting. Right. And I agree. And, you know, I, I, I've used it in the past and and it is it does save you time because it gives you some good information. But I also do agree that you can't um, you can't be knowing how to knowing how to do something and understanding it, because then I think if you then move over to using tools, then you can use them more efficiently if you Absolutely. understand the process. Yes, that's great. Yeah, exactly. OK. All right. That's great. Okay. So I am going to, again, I'm going to link to this course. It's called Front Page Guide to Etsy, the Front Page Guide to Etsy. And um, if you want to hop over there, it's on canononlinemarketing.teachable.com. Canon has two N's, C-A-N-N-O-N. But if you go to the show notes for this episode, I will have a direct link to the, to the course. And um, just before we we move on to something else, because I want to talk to Tammy as a business owner, because that's who's listening and just want to see, you know, how you do business from your own perspective and share some information with us. How much is the course? Oh, the course is $25. I wanted it to be affordable for the Etsy creative community. And so I've tried to pack as much in there as I could and offer it at a at an affordable price point. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, $25 does sound reasonable. <laughs> so you're familiar with Etsy sellers. You're one as well. Um, what do you think are some of the most common mistakes that you see Etsy shop owners or creative business owners in general making when it comes to running their creative or their handmade business? Oh, that's such a good question. And I'm pointing fingers at myself because <laughs> <laughs> I've made so many mistakes. And I think one of the biggest things that if you don't do anything else. I mean, you know, go through the course and learn how to do the the keyword stuff, but invest in your images or at least take the time mm. to not put up a dark photo or use flash on a product because I notice that we get so excited about what we're creating mm-hmm. and we just want to take a picture of it and post it out and get it up there. And it, we're not doing justice to the amazing products that we're making. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, get by a window, maybe in, in some good lighting, daylight, you know, have a strategy around the photography, because mm-hmm. if you can get your photography looking good, then you might also get picked up in Google search. And so um, th- that's mm. that's a big deal as well. And a lot of times if people see a photo, they're not even going to click over. It doesn't matter that you're on the front page if the picture is not looking good. So that's a big mistake I see um, in the creative community as well as social media as well. Um, and then the other things I would say is not building 
your customer base. I think that, um, and I know when I started, it's so exciting to have an Etsy shop and you've got your you know, a hard one stuff up there. You spent all night creating all of these beautiful things and you're so proud of it. Mm. And then that's it. And Etsy's not really a set it and forget it type of a platform. You've got to be engaging and then you have to be engaging uh, offline as well, or I guess off of Etsy and inside of social media. And um, I know that not everybody knows how to do that and how to blend everything. But if you can get on social media, even blogging, and start to build a subscriber list of emails Mm -hmm. that you can send people directly and have access to on your own, because you know, social media, we don't own our fans and followers. So if, you know, Facebook went away tonight, which it's not going to, but we don't, we don't own any of that. But an email is like a, a doormat where people are inviting you in. And if you're giving them, you know, new product news, um, coupons or discounts, you know, Mm. sporadically, people are going to want to be on your email list and and excited about getting your emails. And I think we forget that as um, a seller, we leave it up to Etsy to bring us the people and sell our products for us. And we really need to be hands-on. So I think those are the two biggest things I see. Okay. Wow. That's really good information. One, I never stopped to think that if you show up in Google search, there's an, there's a possibility that you're product photograph can show up as well and so that's another reason to have a really good one mm-hmm, um absolutely but yeah that's when you said it now i just thought oh my goodness yes that does make sense and then a couple of times now you've you've mentioned blogging as you talked about social media is blogging considered social media oh that's so interesting i think maybe i'm so ingrained in it that <laughs> i feel like it is it is all part of it so the the way that I look at blogging um, is is sharing it on social media. So you're telling your story, mm. especially around your products. And sometimes people are afraid to show how they make things because then that breeds competition mm. and all of that stuff. But I really like um, community and I like teaching and I think it's okay if somebody wants to take um, a blog post where I shared how to make a certain thing mm-hmm. and they want to go, you know, do it and blog about it and sell a similar product. That's just life. That's, yeah. that's just going to happen. But if you can tell a story around your shop and around the products, you know, how you came to acquire, you know, the ability and where you source your, um, your products, your materials, all of those things, I think that it's going to be better for you in the long run to be able to share those posts out on Instagram. And if you're on Twitter, just go ahead and share it anyway. And on Facebook and in your groups and in Pinterest particularly, because that traffic is going to go back to your blog. And then I feel like your blog, your website is a little pit stop. And that's not a good word. I can't think of another (laughs) word besides pit stop, but it's a little like stop where people can get to know you, read more about your story, read more about your shop, opt in to get your awesome news. And from there, they can springboard over to your shop and actually buy your products. Mm. So I feel like we're missing that blogging middle component. And I think even if you have a static website where maybe, um, Maybe you've got a brick and mortar as well. Mm -hmm. If you're not blogging, you're not really driving traffic to it and growing your business. And and so I just think blogging is such a huge component to this whole thing. Okay. And and I agree with you. I do think, well, I I agree with everything you just said. I I was about to repeat everything, but I do agree. (laughs) Um, Blogging is, I I guess I just never considered it social media, but it is social. And um, it's a way for people to get to connect with you in a different way and um, just learn more about about you and you never know who's going to land on your blog and who's reading who's reading oh. what you put out there and how that's speaking to someone and how that might help to convert them into a customer yes absolutely yeah so um 
Wow. Okay, Tammy, I I feel like I could go on talking, but <laughs> um, what parting advice do you have for that person listening right now who's kind of feeling a little bit discouraged with their results on Etsy? Oh, that is, oh gosh, that's such a good question. And I don't know if I have such great advice, but what I would say, and I've had to tell myself this as well, is that, you know, just be patient and go with the long view. And it's been done before, but not by you. And so everything that you're doing has value. Your shop has value, your product. It's just going to take a little time to um, find those perfect people who resonate with you and your shop and your products Mm -hmm. and then do a little um, studying and brush up on the stuff that we talked about today. Um, Get that traffic going with Pinterest and and blogging, just baby steps and patience, I guess I would say. (laughs) Okay, thank you. That's really good advice. Um, One of the things you mentioned is Pinterest. And I I don't know if other people have heard this as much as I have, that Pinterest is a huge traffic driver um, to, well, wherever you point it to, whether it be your website or your, you know, your blog or, or your Etsy shop. And I've never really understood or gotten Pinterest. But this year, I'm you know, I said, okay, I'm going to learn Pinterest. I'm going to learn how to use it and see, you know, if, you know, if it really is all that people say it's cracked up to be. So, um, so that's one of my goals for this year. And, and uh, maybe I'll even see if I can find a Pinterest expert to come and help us with that. Because, um, like you said, you know, Pinterest, I think is a good pairing for Etsy and Etsy, Etsy sellers. Yes. And good for you. I hope that you um, do start it. And what I would say to that as well is it's all about search. I mean, if you really look at everything, um, people are searching Pinterest for ideas, recipes, Mm -hmm. you know, inspiration and shopping. And so um, you got to think about your titles again, just like just like with Etsy and Google search, um, we need to know how people are searching. And so think of Pinterest, Etsy, and Etsy, just like uh, Google. That's all about search. Okay. Yes. And I, I read somewhere, I, I don't know, I don't remember where it was, because this, this year I've been trying to educate myself about Pinterest. And somewhere I read, it said, Pinterest is more of a search engine than it is a social media platform. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, cool. Okay. So I'm reading the right things. Good to know. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Tammy, what's the best way people can reach you if they want to get in touch? So the best place is my my main website. My main hub is canononlinemarketing.com. And through there, you can read blog posts. I have a podcast that I do every week and I try my best to post my um, episodes there and, uh, all about my courses, a a little bit about me and they can email me. I'm on the socials also, um, Instagram at Canon social media is my favorite social Mm -hmm. media right now. And so, yeah, they can, they can find me there too. Okay, great. And I'll link to all that so that, um, if, if you want to just go to convome.com and then uh, look for this episode, I will have links to Tammy's website and her social media accounts and all whatnot. So you can connect with her. And I did mean to mention the podcast. I'm so sorry that escaped me. Um, so oh, it's no. on the website, Canon online marketing, but can people also find you in iTunes? Yes, it's the Canon Social Media Podcast on iTunes, and okay. I'm hoping to um, branch out to other areas as well. Yes, that's that's a project we'll be working on behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, thank you so, so much for being my guest. Um, I have really enjoyed talking to you and learning about just blending social media into um, running a a business on Etsy. I know social media is overwhelming for some, for most. And so just to know that there are resources out there that um, can just 
break things down for us and help us. And, and not just that, but, you know, in particular with, you know, what every Etsy seller wants is to get on that front page. And so um, this resource that you've created, um, I, I'm also excited to learn more about that. And if you listen to this episode and you do purchase the front page guide to Etsy, I would love to hear about your experience with it as well. So um, please come back and tell us um, how it worked for you. And um, we would, I would be um, really interested in, you know, in, in hearing people's experiences. Oh, yes, me too. And Ajama, thank you so much for having me on. This has been a blast. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. And I thank you for listening to this episode. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And while you're there, please leave a review too. visit convome.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode. <laughs>